On the bench today, I have this Barnes & Noble Nook HD tablet, which I've converted over to use Android KitKat, or 4.4.4, as you can see here. Normally these come with a proprietary operating system, if you want to call it that, that's based on the Barnes & Noble Nook platform, and was originally designed to kind of lock you into that platform. Um, but I've did some research and found that I was able to turn this into a standard Android tablet so I can do pretty much anything you can do on a normal tablet with this now. So before I go any further, I'm going to just say that if you attempt to do this on your Nook or similar tablet, uh, there is a, a pretty good risk for turning this thing into a brick. So you want to make sure you back everything up and proceed with caution and uh, anything that you do here is at your own risk. Uh, this video is not really a how-to video, it's more of a kind of how I did things video and it may not really be the right way or the best way to do things. It's like I said more for reference than anything else. So now that that's out of the way, uh, a little bit of backstory on this tablet and uh, how it came into my possession. I, uh, I went down to my town's recycle shed a couple of weeks ago to bring uh, an old vacuum cleaner that I needed to discard that was no longer useful. And uh, when I brought that into the electronics recycling shed, I looked around and I saw this uh, sitting in one of the bins. And it looked really good, so I decided to grab it. I figured the price was right, and the return policy is even better if I couldn't do anything with it. So I brought it home, and of course I found that the battery was completely dead and I didn't have the cable to charge it. This uses a proprietary cable just for the Nook HD. Uh, some of the other Nooks may use the same cable, I'm not sure. Anyhow, I went on Amazon and I ordered a cable that would fit you know, this connector. I think this costs less than five dollars and has a standard USB plug on the other end. So then I was able to charge it. Now I wasn't able to charge it through a computer USB port, but I was able to charge it through a regular wall charger. So after testing this thing out and seeing that the battery held the charge and, and the screen was in good condition and all that sort of thing, I decided to go ahead and do some research to see what I could do with this. And after some internet searching I found that it was possible to load a standard Android operating system on this. The process of getting uh, Android on here wasn't completely straightforward, but it wasn't that difficult either. Uh, I found some different sites with different instructions and different links on here, and it took a little bit of trial and error. I, I had uh, a couple of older versions of software that I loaded on here first that didn't quite work out uh, the way that I wanted, but once I figured out what was going on and found the correct versions of things, I was able to make this work pretty easily. The website that I found that sort of had the most succinct um, instruction and sort of the most correct links is this one that I have up here. And I'll leave this link down in the description below if you want to visit this blog and uh, follow these instructions. So this is the micro SD card that came out of the Nook itself. I figured I might as well just use this card. Now a word of caution, this is actually a 32 gig card for. I took all the files off of this first and backed them up. And then following the instructions here, I reformatted this as FAT32. And what happened was is it turned it into a 4 gig card. And then after subsequent playing around, now the thing is only registering that it's 856 megabytes or something like that. So I'm not sure if this process has now sort of rendered this card um, I don't want to say unusable, but if I've now sort of lost all that space or if there's something I'll be able to do once I'm completely done fooling around with this to restore this back to a 32 gig card. If this is something you're going to try, you may want to have a sacrificial card or one that you don't care about. So anyhow, I had the micro SD card, but I also needed this adapter that I had laying around anyway. This is a micro SD to sort of a standard SD um, adapter, and I'm able to just put the, the micro SD card in the back of this thing like that and then I can just insert this into my laptop's card reader. I've got the card loaded into my laptop and you can see it here in uh, Windows Explorer 
Now I'm not going to go through the process of actually formatting this card again since I've kind of already done that, but basically you would just right click on um, the icon for it here and then select format from the drop down and then choose uh, FAT32 and then click start and then the card can be formatted and then it'll be completely empty. Once I had the card formatted and ready to go I then went to step 3 and clicked on this link for Win32 Disk Imager. That brought me to SourceForge where I was able to download and install the Win32 Disk Imager program. The next thing that I did is I went to step 4 and followed the link shown here. And this link is also still active as of January 2017. And I was able to download and install this file by clicking the download button up here. So as you may be able to see here, this file is a gzip file or .gz instead of a standard zip file. In the instructions it shows a link to WinRAR but any zip package such as WinZip or 7-zip should be able to deal with and extract a gzip file. After downloading the CWM image file I copied it to another folder in my documents folder just to kind of keep track of everything and then I used 7-zip and extracted the image. The next step is to launch the Win32 Disk Imager application. Once the Win32 Disk Imager is started I'm going to click this folder icon to select the image that I want to install. Once I have the image file selected, I'm going to just make sure that I have the right device selected as well. And in my case, the only choice is the E drive. And I can just kind of verify that by looking at Windows Explorer. And down here you can see that I have just the C drive, the internal hard drive, and then the SD card, which is the E drive. So once I have all of these things selected correctly, then I will just click on the right button. Now in this case, because I have this card already set up, I'm not going to actually do that, but that would be the next step. And then once this is completed, I would close the Disk Imager application. The next step, step 6, is to download the CWM recovery file from the link that's here. And this link is also a good link as of January 2017. And you can see here, this actually shows the contents of the zip file here. But what I'm going to do is go to the download button and download this file. Once again, I'm going to move the downloaded file to my documents file for safekeeping. Now in this case, I am not going to extract this zip file. I'm just going to leave this as it is. The next step, step 7, is to download CM11 from the link shown here. Now this particular link is no longer active. I wasn't able to find any files. It looks like this was a forum thread at one time and it's now closed or something. I wasn't really able to find any files here. This is the web page that I used to download the files that I loaded onto my Nook. Um, here's the link up here. I'll also leave this down in the comments below. And what I ended up doing was using the latest build which in this case was from August 15, 2016. So I grabbed this zip file over here and downloaded and copied that to my uh, folder in my documents. The next step, step 8, involves downloading the Google Applications package for CM11. Now once again, clicking on this link brings me to that same forum before that was closed and no longer available. So once again I did a Google search for Google Applications or GAPS for CM11. So my search for Google Apps for CM11 brought me to a different forum thread on the XDA forum and I scrolled down and was able to find a link that worked. So I ended up using this package here that's shown in this link which I will link to in the comments section below as well. Clicking that link brought me over to this page, which I then was able to click there and download the file. Once the download of the Google Apps zip file was complete, 
I took the three zip files and copied them over to my SD card and put them in the root folder of the SD card. Once I had the files copied over, this is what the root folder of the SD card looked like. Now that all the required files were downloaded and copied onto the SD card, I removed it from my laptop and then removed the micro SD card from the adapter and set that aside. Then following the instructions over here at step 10, I turned off the Nook by holding the power button down for a few seconds. To insert the SD card, I just pulled out the cover and then put the micro SD in the slot. Now this is a little bit tricky to do and requires a little bit of force to get this card to seat in there. Once that's seated into the slot and ready to go, you can turn the unit on again by pushing and holding the power button for a second and releasing it. Then the unit should start to boot. You can see the Nook logo and then it goes right into the Cyano boot. Now in my case you can see that this thing is actually booting into Android. But this happened the same way uh, when this still had the Nook operating system on it. The first time that I tried to boot from the SD card it went right into the Nook operating system as if it didn't recognize the SD card. I found that I had to just simply do a second reboot. So now you can see it's still going into the Cyano boot, but instead of going into the Android operating system, it should go into the boot menu. Once I was able to successfully boot from the SD card, I got this screen here, which you can see there's some options on the top, and then at the bottom there is version information. Here's a close-up look at the boot menu. Now one thing to note is the version up here at the top. Uh, the first time I tried this, I had come across an older version of the CWM recovery file. I don't remember the exact version, but I think it was 6.0.4.3 or something along those lines. And when I got to the part where I needed to install the actual Android operating system, uh, things didn't work. I got some error messages and I found it was because that older version of CWM wasn't compatible. Once I found this newer version, 6.0.4.6 .6 of CWM, I found that everything worked the way it was supposed to. After the tablet booted up from the SD card, I got these menu options to choose from. The first thing that the instructions recommend is to do a backup of the original operating system and everything that's installed on the Nook. Now, I did attempt that originally just to go through the process, and I ended up having that fail, uh, partly because that SD card that I used ended up formatting at only four gigabytes the first time I formatted it, um, and there was more data than that on this unit, so it got to a certain point and couldn't write any more data to the SD card. So if this is something that you plan to attempt after watching this video, you'll probably want to use a larger SD card, one that can handle uh, all of the data that would be loaded on this Nook. And I believe this particular model is an 8 gig Nook. So after my attempt at doing the backup failed, I ended up deciding to just skip that and go ahead with the process anyway, knowing that if it failed, I might not be able to use this tablet for anything and would maybe have to bring it back to the recycling center. So after either successfully performing a backup or making the decision to skip the backup, the next thing to do is to install zip files. To navigate through the menu, I'm just going to use the volume control on the side of the tablet and scroll down to the install zip option. And then I'm going to use the nook button that's down at the bottom of the screen to enter and select that option. Now from this sub-menu, I'm going to go to the Choose Zip from External SD Card, enter that, and now you can see the three files that I wrote to the SD card that need to be installed. Again, the first file sets that I chose to experiment with were not quite right and I got error messages on those files. But these three files installed perfectly without any error messages I simply scrolled down, hit enter on the file, and then got the status messages on the screen, and then ultimately a successful 
uh, return message and then went back to the menu and went to the next file. So after all three of these files are installed, then the next step is to just remove the SD card from the Nook. So then once the SD card is removed, then I just use the power button over here, click that once to go back up to the next level and then one more time to go up to the top level menu and then I'm just going to choose the reboot system now hit enter on the Nook key at the bottom and now the tablet should reboot into the Android operating system and now you can see my tablet has booted up and it's ready to be used the first time that the tablet boots it'll go into sort of a setup routine where you can set up your Wi-Fi and, and some basic things like that but then once that's complete you'll be at an empty home page with the Google Play Store and you can start installing any of the apps that you normally would on an Android device. So that's really pretty much all there is to uh, rooting. So that's pretty much all there is to rooting one of these Nook HD tablets and installing the Android operating system on there. In this case this is KitKat version 4.4.4. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. Thanks for watching.